I believe we are live in the Lightworkers Lab, and I'm also joined by quite a few of you here, and I want to thank you so very much for being here. <sighs> I want to start by saying that I am not here to <clears throat> provide answers. I'm not here to lecture. I'm not here to educate. I really, my intention is to create a sacred space and a chamber for all that is possible for us and for this world. <clears throat> I can't start crying now. That wouldn't be fair. <laughs> Come on, Spirit, let me get it together. I'm here with the intention of being together with you in a community at a time on the planet that is extremely trying and of course, here in America, there's a lot that's been going on. We had the murder of George Floyd. We've had subsequent protests and unrest, and there is a lot of anger, a lot of grief. Uh, a lot of people are terrified. A lot of people are reactionary. A lot of people are rising up, and this is a peculiar time in which we live. I think that it's incumbent upon us as spiritual people to be there for one another, <clears throat> to witness for one another what we are all going through because we are all connected. I do believe that. We are all unified. I do believe that. But our unity, as I said in the post, does not negate your lived experience. Our unity and oneness does not take away from the path that has brought you to this moment. And I just want to honor that in all of us. And I also want to acknowledge in my own self those things that I did not know and those things that I did not want to know. And I can tell you, because I pride myself on being very honest, that I work on myself, I do. I self-reflect and I pop into the observer as I teach you all to do. And I was raised, I can't, I can't apologize for how I was raised because that was outside of my control. I can't apologize for this body that I'm in. It's out of my control just as it is for you. But I can tell you that I've been mindful for a very long time about how I think and about how I live my life and I conduct myself. And even so, there's always light coming in, isn't there? There's always work to be done, and that's okay. I think some of us are scared because we haven't faced in ourselves the potential spaces and places in ourselves that might need to come into alignment, and it's okay to have some resistance around that. Nobody's here to blame anybody, <laughs> truly. I'm saying to you, this is just a space for what's possible, and it's a space for love to be expressed, and more than that, this is a space in which we welcome spirit to come because from this human vantage point, at least I can say from my human vantage point, I can't chart the course. I can't change all the hearts. But I know God can. I know spirit can. And that spirit is the same spirit that created all of us. And so if you wouldn't mind, I would just like to call out to spirit now. And I like to call spirit God and creator. You can call spirit whatever you want to call spirit. It doesn't matter. God is love. I just want to welcome spirit into this chamber, into this timeless space that has the potential to change and refine hearts and to heal wounds, and to amplify love. God, we ask that you would lead us in the way that we would go. And we ask that you would give us the requisite courage and bravery to open ourselves up to examination and truly refinement by fire. And the thing about fire is it burns. Sometimes it's painful, but... Just like with labor pains, that pain 
gives birth to something new. And that's where we are. Spirit, thank you, because that's where we are. Let's not get too fixated on the chaos here so that we contribute to it. We are being called as spiritual people to rise above it and to shift out of the chaos with our energy and our intention. We can do that. And God, we ask that you would lead us in this way. Teach us how to love one another perfectly. Teach us how to overcome indoctrination and programming on all sides and hatred and anger on all sides. Teach us how to love one another perfectly. For in loving one another perfectly, we become more like you. And that's what I seek to do. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul follows hard after you, God. Help me to be a better person. Help me to be courageous. Help me to be the love that I seek for myself and my own family. Help me to be that for others. I seek to be an instrument of your peace, God. Truly, I do. We all do, and that's why we're here. I pray blessings upon this space and upon all people who watch now or at some point in the future. May activations and openings and blessings rain down on us all. And may the way be cleared for us all. In God's name we pray. Amen. And so it is. Thank you. It's okay to cry. This is the body's way that we move energy around through us and out of us or to the places that need the light and that need the activation. It's okay to cry. Never stop yourself. And sometimes we don't really know what the problem is. Here we do. Sometimes we don't, but we're moved into emotion because the body is asking us to align to a higher principle. And so I always say, let yourself move with that emotion, whether that's laughter or whether that's tears. I want to start off tonight with another prayer that I thought we could do together. And this is a mantra prayer. And I actually put it up earlier in our space in the Lightworkers Lab. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this mantra and then lead us in the singing of it. Don't worry. We're not expecting you to sing in front of everybody. You can sing right where you are. You can remain muted. It's totally fine. But I just want to say that the blending of your voice, which is the song of your beingness in this body, the blending of that voice with the intention, which we're going to learn about in this mantra, is so powerful. One of the coolest things I heard Nicole Powers say this weekend in her workshop was a reference to that scripture that I always talk about. And that that scripture is where two or more are gathered, their God is in the midst of them, period. And I believe that, and I know that to be true. But when Nicole was talking, she said, it doesn't even have to be another person. It can be your body witnessing with your mind. It can be your mind agreeing with your spirit. It can be your spirit agreeing with your body. You are a trinity or a triune being comprised of divine parts. And all these parts can come into alignment and an agreement with each other. And there God is in the midst of them. I thought that was so powerful. And so when we agree together and come together, it puts wings to our intention. And when we add our voice to that, that amplifies and gives momentum to that intention. Truly, it causes that which we seek to manifest to be manifested from the uncreation, the unspace, the void, if you will. By bringing it out of the voice, this is how we create it. So let me share my screen with you, if you wouldn't mind, so we can all look at the mantra. I find that to be so helpful. Let's go over this mantra, and I want to talk a little bit about it. The first word of the mantra is loka. And loka means location or realm. 
But I really want us to think of Loka as all universes existing right now. When we think of all the universes that are existing right now, that moment is filled with possibility. It's all happening now. Loka. The next word in this mantra is samasta. And samasta refers to all the beings sharing that same location. All the souls, all the spirits, including all of the animals and all of the trees. And also, let's talk about interdimensional off-planet. All beings that exist in these universes, we're sharing that same location, samasta. The next word is sukino. And sukino means centered in happiness and joy, free from suffering. Building upon this mantra, all beings that share the same location in all the universes that are existing right now are centered in this moment in happiness and joy, free from suffering. Bhavansu, bhav, the divine mood. Yes, can you dig it? That's vibration. The divine mood or state of unified existence. This fifth dimensional Christ consciousness, Buddhic consciousness, no separateness reality. That's the divine mood. That's the vibration. This mood, this vibration is what manifests happiness and joy and freedom from suffering for all beings sharing the same location in all universes ex existing now. And unto, it's like amen. It means may it be so or it must be so. I like that one better. It must be so. When you and I agree on a thing, our Father in heaven is compelled to do it. It must be so. And so in Reciting this mantra, know that these are fire words, truly. These are power words that contain activations. And as we're singing this together, these words are creating something. And I will tell you, it's a pattern. It's a pattern of energy that's alive and breathing, that's magnetic. And as we visualize this for all people, we create this, loka, samasta, sukino, bhavantu. Together we're going to sing this 11 times. 11 is a divine number. And I thought about how many times we should do this together, but I like 11. Why? Because there's so much numerological significance with the number 11. But the number 11 is also connected to karma, karma. When I speak of karma, I'm speaking about trends and patterns that come from before. And some of these are ancient and some of these are outside of this life. Karma, trends, actions, patterns that came before perpetrated by others, maybe us in a different form, ancestors, errors, sins and transgressions that are causing present day experiences that may cause suffering, karma. The number 11 connects with karma. And I like to envision the 11 as two pillars of divine power. Envision that with me. Two pillars of divine power through which we walk almost as if through a door to the other side of a thing, to the other side we break out of this pattern, this karmic trend. I also like 11 because it's connected quite simply to spiritual awakening. We call this shift. We call this ascension. Wake up. Wake up. We want to wake up. We're still waking up. Don't think you're all the way awake yet. You're not. We're still waking up. Wake up. And we want everyone to wake up. Wake up into what? Wake up into love. That's what we want. The number 11. What I'll do now is I'll sing this to you twice, just so that you know how the melody goes. 
and then we will all sing this together. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavansu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavansu All right, together. 11 times and I'll be keeping track. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavansu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavanzu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavanzu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavanzu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavanzu Loka Samasta Sukino Pavanzu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavansu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavansu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavansu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavansu Last time Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavan